<clears throat> our, next, our next speaker, Tomek Mat Matskevich, was a construction worker. He's an explorer and he's a climber. What makes Tomek different, what makes him special, actually special is the right word, is the fact that he uses the publicity from his adventures, from climbing, and there's some names of mountains he's gone up. Nanga Parbat. Very high. Um, <laughs> he uses the publicity from doing these amazing things to actually campaign for social, social justice. So he, he, he sees things which he thinks are wrong and uses the publicity and people following him, writing in newspapers about the great things he's doing to actually campaign. That makes him special. He's a true adventurer, and he is Poland's Indiana Jones. Hello, everyone. My name is Tomek. I'm very happy that I can be here with you. Uh, so, on the beginning, I also have to say something uh, about my English. It's, um, <laughs> it's a bit limited because it's not in use since a couple of years. Uh, since four years, I'm exploring uh, Pakistan and West Himalaya, trying to climb Nanga Parbat in winter. So, this is the country where people are speaking Urdu, and Urdu is uh, actually the language which I know, I think, better than <laughs> maybe even Polish. <laughs> so, in the beginning, I would like to show you a short movie from the last year when... I think you need this, yeah? Uh, 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 no, I don't... Yeah? No, no. Okay. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, my presentation is a bit different. Uh, <laughs> So, as I say, since four years, we, I trying to climb Nanga Parbat in winter. Uh, on the beginning, maybe this movie uh, from the last year, very short. Hey. Nie ma nic gorszego niż samotne torowanie w głębokim, świeżym śniegu. Wysokość 6200 Proszę Państwa, kochani, no i tutaj... Czy Wy to widzicie? Żurek z jajeczkiem i z kiełbaską sobie gotuję. To jest szczelina, znacie już ją z poprzednich odcinków telewizji Miałnia Plus Extreme. Dzisiaj pokażę Wam szczelinę. Zasypana częściowo. Chodźcie ze mną. Z 
żeby was to nie zmyliło czasem to są w środku tylko plasterki na nosek Małe porządki, a na dworzu. Witamy kolejny dzień walki z kamieniami, śniegiem i innymi rzeczami. O, dziku nie jest sypną twarz. Dr. Frankenstein. Proszę Państwa, jesteśmy na grani! I ciśniemy dalej. Tycha jest wystawiona na próbę. Tam u góry zalega dużo śniegu, jak tam się zerwie, to wszystko tam leci. Mówiłem nie pić po prostu tej, tej żołądku. A później człowiek się upije i tak właśnie wygląda. No, o, o, o! Żegnajcie! Mamy zapas. Wszystkie. A nie przejmuj się po prostu, to tylko na nocy ty jesteś połamany. So. That was the short clip from the last year. As I told you, since four years, we're trying to climb Penanga. 
And why are we trying to do this? Because uh, I don't know if you know, uh, in the, from the 14 peaks in Himalaya, uh, 11 peaks, they've been climbed by Polish people, and so, and only two left, K2 and Nanga Parbat. And this is, the, this is also the reason that we want, we want to finish this, this project, we want to close the 14 peaks. We need them for us. <laughs> and uh, Nanga Parbat, uh, this is uh, 8,160 meters peaks, and um, and uh, many people they've been trying to climb this uh, in winter since uh, 50 years actually, uh, without any any success. Uh, the highest. Mm. You know, the, uh, in the 1997, uh, was one expedition of uh, Andrew Zavada um, with lots of people from, from very, very famous climbers from Poland. And one of them, he reached the level, uh, the altitude, uh, 7,800 meters. So it was only 300 meters to the top. But unfortunately, he, he, he had to descend because it was... Uh, uh, terrible wind and very, very, very cold. So he uh, actually he lost also a couple of fingers, and it was impossible to to finish this project. And that was 17 years ago, and since uh, this time, no one been above the 7,000 meters. And last year, I, I had this. I don't know how to call it, but I reached 7,400 meters after this this uh, 17 times break. <laughs> so, and also this year we've been uh, with a bigger team in, in, in the mountains, uh, uh, six people, and in the same base camp we had also another expedition, Simone Moro and David Gettler. And this year, so also uh, this year, also we we we've been above the 7,000 meters, but unfortunately, again, without any any summiting. So maybe next year. Mm. So maybe we can play also some slideshow, and I, I can show you also uh, some movies. The first part is from the first year in 2011. Of course, be, before you go um, uh, to the mountains, you need to be prepared. You need to have all the all the food, all the gas, all the ropes, all the gear, climbing gear. I mean, all the down suits, uh, down sleeping bags, tents, everything. You, you need to be prepared for uh, two, three months in the wilderness, where is no hot water, no shops, no. No food, you have to organize everything before. Mm. And beginning of the trip is of course Lavarpindi, Islamabad, where you, where you have to also organize the permission, the permit to, to climb uh, Nanga Parbat, because all the 8,000 peaks, if you want to climb, you need to organize permission. Uh, Pakistan. Pakistan, this is an amazing place because um, everywhere you can see people and they are definitely not uh, rich people. They are living in... Uh, they have no good cars, they have no good phones, they have no too much money. But uh, actually they are very happy, they look very happy, they have uh, uh, happy eyes. And uh, so since four years, I have a lot of friends up there and, and they show me also that the happiness and the, you know, the, and the sadness also, it's coming just from the brain, from, from um, not from the material situation, not from the wallet. You know, if you have full wallet, you can be happy, but after, if you lose the wallet, then you are sad.
that was the third village because uh, Nanga Parbat is, is quite uh, close to the Karakorum Highway because only 25 kilometers beside the Karakorum Highway. So you can you can go to uh, to the mountain very very fast, maybe three three four days trekking, and you are just in the base camp. And uh, on the level 3,800 meters, still people living there, and they they have a sheep, they have a goats, they have a yaks, and this kind of animals. And as I say, they have no money. They're not using money in, the, in this area. This is uh, the, the uh, Nanga Parvat. She, uh, she has uh, three faces. One is a Diamir site, one is a Rupal site, and from the north is Rahikot face. And the first two times we tried to climb from the Diamir site, which on the Diamir side, uh, there is a classic road. The name of the classic road is King Shoffer Road because the King Shoffer, he was the first guy who, who opened this road. And this is quite fast, but it's not so long, but it's quite difficult, technically difficult, because uh, the beginning is, uh, is uh, in the beginning you have a couloir about 600 meters in ice and maybe 60 degrees. Mm, and after, on the end of this culoir, you have a 200 meters vertical wall. Uh, and then, after this vertical wall, it's easier. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's quite short. And two times we've, we've been trying to climb the King Schroffer Road in winter. Unfortunately, it looks very, more, much more difficult because the culoir is all, all, all the time in the shadow. And uh, so it's full of ice, and the ice is quite dirty, very difficult for climbing. And, and, uh, and so we decided to change the tactic, and we move on the other side, on the south side, where is more, more, more sun. And um, it's, the, 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 the shell road, there is a shell road, longer one, but easier, technically easier, but it's quite warm. This is still a few pictures from the Diamir site. So Nanga Parvat, uh, on this side actually, uh, in, in uh, 1895, Albert Mamere, he tried to tried to climb to the summit and he reached uh, it was a very good um, success because he reached 7,000 meters he was only with one local person but unfortunately he didn't come back uh, and after the first ascent on the peak um, on the summit was in uh, 1953 by uh, Hermann Bull and uh, the man who was the leader of this expedition was a helicopter. And but Herman Bull he, used, he was using because that was this time after the Second World War quite popular was amphetamine and methamphetamine and also cocaine tea. So he was using all the, of those and he did it solo without any bigger problems. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the next expedition in 2013. We start from the Frankfurt and then we, 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 we landed in the, on the side of, of Rupal and we tried to climb the Shell Road. And actually that was quite a good expedition because we, as I said, we reached Mm, actually, I, 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 I did it because Marek, he, he needed to descend because he had some problems with, with, uh, with body. But we reached this time uh, 7,400 meters and we spent 21 days in the mountain since we 
left the base camp. Till the weekend back, it was 21 days, so quite a long time. And I say, 22 times, 22 expeditions in 25 years. And unfortunately, this mountain is so thick and so difficult <laughs> in winter time. Some people call this mountain killer mountain because uh, 200 people, they reach the summit. But 70 of them, they never come back. But I think this is not the, the fault of the mountain because she is not killing the people. The people are killing themselves in trying to climb this mountain. I think. So after four years, <laughs> I, I um, now I I, I, uh, I know that I spent all together one year in this in this area. So I know quite good everything around this uh, this this mountain. Also lots of people, lots of friends, mm. and also. Uh, I feel very, very safe in this place, uh, even if uh, last year something bad was happened up there, because uh, 17 people, local people, I, actually we don't know from where, they come to the base, come from the Amir side, and they kill a um, couple of climbers, I think it was 10 climbers, they've been, they've been, uh, they've been killed. And and so that was a very very sad situation and a very sad story. But there's a couple of opinion about this, how it happened and why it happened. And so it's very difficult to say where is the where is the fault of this. Mm. But uh, for me, uh, Nanga Parbat is uh, is, a, is a very very safe place. Especially, I feel very safe, especially when I am above the 6,000 meters. Maybe because all the people are lower. <laughs> <laughs> and so last year, when we uh, when we've been climbing with Marek, with my friend Marek. Uh, because, you know, when you're going up, you need to have uh, everything with you. So, lots of ropes, lots of food, lots of gas, uh, stoves, uh, down suits, uh, everything is very heavy. <laughs> Sometimes you have to go up and down, up and down, up and down. You have to make lots of deposits. And, and we've been using uh, snow uh, as our... Uh, Homes, you know, we, we dig the holes in the snow, we make a snow caves, and we uh, and we slept in the snow caves. The, the last uh, uh, the last attack, yeah, the last attack, uh, you know, was, was maybe I spent maybe seven days in the snow cave waiting for a good weather on the level maybe 6,700 meters, and it was such such uh, bad weather that uh, that I couldn't move from this uh, snow cave. It was, I, I was like a, like in jail, but it was quite okay because I stay alone with my with my thinking, with my brain, and that was good moment uh, for me just to to look inside my my brain, and it was quite a good time. For, for 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 uh, meditation, kind of meditation, and also that that, that cave was um, maybe one and a half, maybe two square meters, and so not very big. 
and uh, when the wind outside was 200 kilometers per hour, I couldn't move, but sometimes you need to go to the toilet. And, and then, you know, you need to organize the toilet in this cave. <laughs> <laughs> and that was also a funny thing, but... Uh, it's also not a big problem. Uh, here, maybe, yes, you know, you need to have, find a toilet when you need to make a pee, but there, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I would like to say thank you very much for, for this invitation. <laughs> <laughs> um,